high. This video is going to be a bit of a what in the hell is going wrong with our country rant. However, I do have a few suggestions for real business owners and for our government if they truly want to fix things. If some do, but others don't, I have suggestions for that as well. We have the Ukraine war going on, and we have sent uncounted billions of dollars with no accountability on how it was spent. Some of which was conveniently sent to the FTX currency bank, which turned around and donated it back to the Democrats in mass, and a few Republican and name only Republicans. Plus we have sent more and more military equipment and other resources to them, depleting our own. And speaking of our military, according to heritage.org, the active component of our military is two-thirds the size it should be with aged equipment and poor readiness status. It's rated our US military posture as weak. The heritage.org website goes by five different rankings. Very weak, weak, marginal, strong, and very strong. And on most of them, they have three different qualifiers capacity, capability, and readiness. I'll ignore the marginal status points. Those are the neutral ones, but I'll point out any weak or strong ones for our military. Currently, our army capacity is weak, but their, ver but their readiness is very strong. Our navy sucks ass. The capacity is very weak and readiness is weak. The Air Force is very weak in its readiness. Our Marine Corps is the best of the bunch. Hoorah! The capacity is a little on the weak side, but the capable and readiness are both strong. I'm not going to discuss our nuclear capabilities, but it's pretty good. I'll have a link to the website in, our, in the description. As you know, crime of all types is skyrocketing, but corrupt governors and mayors are releasing criminals in prison in droves. Corrupt DAs are refusing to prosecute crimes based on race, gender, sexual preference, or just because it's not worth their time. They don't want those pesky criminals in their jails and prisons. And just that it happens to mostly be in Democrat-run strongholds is just a coincidence, right? Especially when people keep voting for these policies, right? Just our, board, our border is more porous than a pasta strainer. From the testimony of, a, of the Border Patrol, they aren't security for the border anymore. They're Uber drivers. With this kind of action it makes it extremely easy for child and sex trafficking to occur. Not to mention for criminals to cross and illegal drugs as well. So that means fentanyl and other illegal drugs. Not to mention ODs and deaths. Our asylum courts are extremely overloaded, years overdue, and Joe Biden just wants to make it much, much worse. Not to mention the millions of others who just won't show up for their court dates and won't be deported. We also have who knows how many illegal immigrants in our country now with absolutely no way to support them. None. Our government once shut down 
federal funding for people who are in the China Thousand Talents program, but it was allowed back in in 2021 by the Congress. Why? Do you have any idea what it is? It's quite literally a brain drain of the U.S. In 2008, China began enticing scientists and foreign researchers to expatriate, basically to give up their U.S. citizenship and to relocate to China and become Chinese citizens. It's also resulted in them doing re those a lot of those people to do research for China here in the U.S. and stealing information for them before leaving effectively making them spies for China, stealing American tech, science, and secrets. Do you have any idea how much intellectual property has been stolen from the U.S. government and other U.S. companies? According to foreignpolicy.com, they have been stealing anywhere from 225 to 600 billion dollars worth per year. This article was written in 2019. In the article they said that China was doing better over the years in this report. But if that was the case, can you imagine what it was like previously? China ignores all patents and copyright laws that should be honored. No recompense is given. I had to search hard for another article that was more current. I finally found one by CBS News in 2022, where Chinese hackers have stolen trillions of intellectual property and sensitive information and data from about 30 multinational companies. We're talking about blueprints of fighter jets, helicopters, and missiles. In pharmaceuticals, they were stealing info about diabetes, obesity, and depression drugs. And in the energy industry, they were stealing solar panel and edge vacuum systems. The energy industry information isn't stuff that you have at home, but things that you would use to make large energy plants. This hacking program that China has is still ongoing today. And Joe Biden has, to, has had the great idea to deplete our national oil reserves when it was already at all-time lows, sending it ever lower. The oil reserves are supposed to be used to help supply our military and country in time of war, not to be sold off for a stunt. Ironically enough, when oil prices were at record lows here in the U.S., Donald Trump wanted to restore our oil reserves to full capacity, giving our oil companies massive business and taking care of the reserve that needed to be filled once more. But the Congress blocked it. Why? It made perfect sense. Just our economy is in the dumpster, despite what Joe Biden and the Democrats say. You know it, and I know it. Inflation is through the roof. Prices are just too high. Small businesses got closed during COVID and haven't been able to reopen. People are refusing to go back to work or are homeless because they couldn't find a job to pay for the bills they already had. There are shortages of food, baby items, and gas and other needed items. Banks are having runs on them, and the government's only bailing out the big ones that suit their needs and are more than willing to let the local banks collapse. The federal government says it's trying to save the earth and the environment while ignoring what China and India pumps out into the atmosphere, earth, and water, and ignoring what happened here at home in the train derailment and chemical disaster in East Palestine, Ohio, leaving them to fend for themselves. 
with everything that's going wrong, what can be done about it? For a very large portion of the country, we have become a service industry and make very little here at home. We depend on a country that is more than a political rival but could almost qualify as an enemy if they haven't if they aren't one already just for cheap products clothing rare minerals electronics and medicines just what is wrong with this picture we were a world giant in production we took care of ourselves for a lot of things. We need to take our production and respect back. Depending on China for products that are critical to our nation is madness. If a war kicks off where China is involved, or if China just decides to flex their muscles, they could decide to just stop sending or selling these critical products to us? Or what if they just tampered with those medications where after prolonged doses you die or get cancer or another disease? If they just poisoned the medications while you die quickly, the US would just recall them. But the other way, it would be too little, too late, and we're crippled. But these are just a few ideas of what China could do if they got nasty. We need to have other sources for what we have China making for us. We need to make them here at home. We could have Canada and Mexico making medications if they could guarantee quality. Or saying, Colombia, they do a lot of drugs there anyway, right? We could have Canada and Mexico making clothing and mining precious metals or Africa or here at home. We need to have our businesses move back home. We need to refurbish and rebuild our steel production and other plants, create new jobs here. Help create products and services. We need to update our military where it should be moving things back to this side of the globe to our country and north and south of us would be an epic boon to everyone involved. This people also need to realize we need oil. Not just for gas and oil for cars, okay? Do you have any idea how many different things are made from petroleum? It's an ungodly amount. All sorts of things we use in our daily lives, including things we want to use for renewable energy sources. What do you think solar batteries are made from? Or the wind turbines? Or the lubricant? Or the tires you drive on your electric cars? Or the parts in the car you drive in? Not to mention most of the fiberglass parts of the car? I'll put a list below in the description of just a short list of what's made from petroleum. A lot of them are medical supplies, household supplies, and others. We need it. Now, if you truly want to help reduce our emissions, reduce our dependence on oil for energy production, and have a stable, strong energy production, there is a way to do it. But Green New Deal activists hate this idea. It's converting our power plants to nuclear. It changes our emissions from those power plants to zero. It's stable, strong energy production and drastically reduces our needs on fossil fuels. Over 60% of our power plants across the nation use fossil fuels. 60.2% to be exact. Just why do they object to normal Americans using it 
when our Navy uses it all the time. Just we have the knowledge and know-how to use it safely. We can improve on it and have other countries as an example of how to deal with the waste. We also need to open the oil vault. Let them drill and refine to their heart's content, long-term leases, and push through the ability for them to build. Get our energy independence back. If we convert our power plants to nuclear, the need for oil, gas, and coal are greatly reduced, but left for housing, business, and business making it cheaper in cost, also for gas prices. Then when we produce more oil for products and everything else and refine it here at home, lower still, but more profits for the companies here at home because we're buying and selling it here. It would also mean less emissions. Why? Because we can produce it cleaner here. We wouldn't need to have it shipped across the ocean in big diesel ships pumping out the smog either. And we could also probably export it too. We could send it southward to our South American neighbors via pipeline keeping the shipping costs and emissions low. If we were to sell it to the EU and UK we could take care of their energy needs and loosen the stranglehold the Middle East and Russia have over them. Now how do we deal with China stealing our intellectual property and brain drain and whatnot? I don't know if you've heard about TikTok and how it has supposedly been stealing Americans personal information and sending it to China through the company called ByteDance. Joe Biden and the Democrats have asked ByteDance to sell the American version of TikTok to an American business to stop data theft and sending it back to China. ByteDance has refused, saying that it wouldn't stop the theft of personal information. China has also can constantly refused to do any kind of compensation for all the intellectual property it has stolen and our government hasn't really done anything about it. It's time for our federal government to nut up and do something serious. Both as a country and for the businesses that have been harmed by theft by China. To do that we need to plan this out and then strike hard and fast. Let's call this Operation Reciprocity. I stole that title from Tom Clancy. Just from the DOJ, we need to get federal search warrants to cut the power to the company that hosts TikTok here in the U.S. and a few other hubs from the U.S. so they can't delete any information from their computers or servers, have no-knock warrants from the federal police to charge in an escorting techs to secure the servers and computers immediately, then have them search for all American citizen information and confirm or deny if it was transmitted to China. If it was, TikTok is permanently banned and all other legal actions ensue against ByteDance in China. Also, we should demand recompense for all intellectual property stolen from the U.S. and U.S. companies. If Chinese companies can be confirmed to have stolen intellectual properties from U.S. companies as well, they should give recompense as well. If and when China and the companies refuse, any kind of real compensation for what was taken, then they should be taken by force. If they have stolen from us and refuse to acknowledge it or give recompensation, we get it. If it's a Chinese corporation and they have land, stock, 
or whatever here in, in places here in the U.S. They are now forfeit according to appropriate value. If it is China and they own the same here in the U.S., it is also forfeit to be dispersed to affected companies first, then to the U.S. After everything got us owned here in the U.S., then we target U.S. Treasury bonds that China and U.S. companies hold, starting with the highest interest rates. They are now forfeit to be returned and given to the U.S. companies first, then the U.S. until fully compensated. And I mean fully. This would have several effects. One, it would strengthen American companies dramatically. Two, it would remove Chinese company and China owned property from our country. Three, it would strengthen the US dollar. Four, it would reduce the deficit by how much is anyone's guess. Five, companies that got recompense, depending on the size of it, would be in great position to grow rapidly. This there would, of course, this, this, of course there would be a really bad effect of probably kicking off an economic war with China and they're seizing American properties owned in China. Just to prevent such an action, either the president, vice president, or the head of DOJ would need to tell those companies a few months in advance to get out of China, move out and sell the involved properties. If they have stock in China companies, sell them and already have other supply chains developed for medications, clothing, and whatnot when direct measures are used against and by China. This last idea of mine would be savage against China and could have nasty repercussions, triggering possible real war. But how much longer are we going to tolerate what China is doing to us without actions or repercussions? How much longer can we go on with our inflation, the collapsing dollar and bank closures? We have to make some hard, harsh, strong decisions and make them stick. But now, let me take things to a different level. What about the rampant illegal immigration that Joe Biden and the Democrats created and encourage? What about those who are trying to divide us by everything? Calling us sexist, racist, homophobic, transphobic, whatever they want, whatever they can't define um, when they can't even define what a woman is. Just what about the massive divide between the woke mob and the rest of the country? And there is a divide. What is woke? As Tim Pool said, understanding the woke is simple. It is the modern left liberal culture created by algorithms on social media. It is characterized by cult-like adherence to the rapidly changing ideological foundations rooted in various leftist theories. It is social zombieism. Close quote. This is pretty much what has taken over the Democratic Party and what they bend the knee to. 
Not to mention what the mainstream media, who bends the knee to the Democratic Party. Can such a divide even be mended where we can work together once more as a whole country? That is a question that a lot of people have been asking lately. There have been polls asking people about this. Democrats, Independents, Republicans, all, on all sides, they have suggested a peaceful divorce between the two sides. Or if we couldn't do it peaceful, Civil War 2.0. As a country, with all the mayhem and chaos that we have going on right now, we can't deal with a civil war on top of it. It would make things monstrously worse for everyone. If we can't work things out to where we work together as a single country, pardon me, we need to split into two countries through peaceful divorce. One based on Democrat, leftist, woke policies, and the other based on the Constitution. We would split into red or blue states. People would have to make a choice of which side they want to be in and which citizen ship they want to be in. They would need to relocate. We would need to, this, the physical money would change. Keep the bills the same, but change color. Red backs and blue backs. Both would be of equal value at the start, but would later change based on the country's trade, actions, and etc. Borders would be established, perhaps walls to separate the red from the blue, but on roads and whatnot, allowing free travel through with valid driver's license and passport, and free trade with both of our countries, and have a mutual defense treaty between the two of us. International policies would be determined by our own by their own governments. And economy and what other sections would be established by as a new country can. It does not mean that all the states need to be contiguous for the new country or connected as it were so that if a red state was surrounded by blue states, that's okay. Or if blue states were divided by red states, that's okay. Free travel, trade, defense treaty, all of that is just... Furthermore, both countries would need to honor any and all concealed carry permits legally issued by the other country. No busting the other just for kicks and grins. And also, I'm pretty sure that the red states, the ones that honor the Constitution, would probably have a strict illegal immigration policy, so they would help them to return to south of the border or to the nearest blue state. Have a nice day. Now, let me address for those who would need to move. This would be a difficult thing to do, understandably. However, both governments of the divide should assist in the move from where you were and relocation to a new home or apartment if you were renting and job placement. Both governments should work hard to make things as painless as possible so that if you had given up your home you should get another home 
to where you were relocated to and job placement to help you and help place you in a similar job and want that and try and make things as painless as possible to where you moved to. So, if we were to have a peaceful divorce, this is what I would suggest. It's a rough shot plan, I know, but it's a start. Do you have any opinions on anything or everything I've said? I'd love to hear from you. Good night.